What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Against All Odds podcast. It's been a while, but uh, we're back. Anyway, I'm here with Rafa. Rafa, do you want to give me your full name, your position, and your age? Yeah, my name's uh, Rafael Ayagua. I'm 23 years old. I'm from uh, Nigeria, a central midfield. I play for FC Tulsa. I love it. And uh, Rafa and me are best friends. Absolute best friends on the team. You can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited for this podcast. So let's roll the intro and let's get started. Hi, right, Rafa. Um, so you're born in Nigeria. Yep. But what city were you born in? And give me, I'm not the, I've never been to Nigeria. So you're going to have to give me a little bit of like, if you're close to. Uh, yeah, uh, I was born and uh, raised in Benue State. Boko to be precise. Boko? Yeah. And uh, what languages do they, how many languages do you speak? I, I speak English, I speak uh, my dialect, that's uh, my local language. Mm. Um, uh, I, I, I hear a little of knowledge, like the Norwegian, uh, yeah. yeah, a little of it, yeah. That's sick. And you taught mm. me some of, uh, what, what language were you in solo teaching me like a few weeks ago? Yeah, it's like uh, the broken English. That's uh, the one everyone on the streets in Nigeria understands, you know? Yeah. yeah. So in, in Nigeria, that's like what, if you can go across all Nigeria, everybody's speaking that broken English? Exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. And then you have your own local dialect in Boko? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so you're born there. Um, what's your family situation? Do you have any brothers, sisters, or... Yeah, I have a lot of brothers. Uh, I have four sisters. Uh, my late dad, he got married to four wives, and uh, you know, uh, I happen to have uh, a lot of uh, siblings, you know. So, some big family, a big family. Yeah, yeah. How was that growing up? Was that fun? Where is everybody like close in Boko? Or yeah, uh, growing up, it was fun, you know. Uh, but in the African settings, you know, when my dad passed on, you know. It became like all my on its own, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, the family kind of like uh, split it. Uh, every woman was uh, with his kids and stuff, you know. So we're not living uh, that close anymore. But time to time, like uh, the festive period, we all come together and uh, like celebrate Xmas and New Year's together, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah, and that's good. When? How long ago was did your dad pass away? Yeah, it, uh, it's been uh, ten years now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's tough. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's good that your family's still close. They still come together for holidays and everything. And yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And so for for your immediate family with your uh, your brothers and sisters, are is everybody still in Nigeria? No, has anybody else left or done anything? No, no, they are all still in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, but in different states though. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, Gucci's gonna come up. Gucci always got to say hi to uh, <laughs> the podcast guests. Yeah. You like cats? No, I'm, I'm scared of cats. Where I'm from, where we don't play with cats, you know, it's like, uh, we believe in Africa that cats are fetish. Uh, yeah, so it's not my fault, though. No, don't worry, Gucci, yeah. she, she, uh, she won't hurt you, hopefully. Yeah. It's okay. kind of crazy sometimes, though. Yeah. With Kieran and Eric, when they were over here, mm. they just popped right up on, on their lap. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Kieran was just petting her for like 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, all right, so then um, when did you start playing soccer? Yeah, I started like, it's like, it's, it's been like forever, mm -hmm. you know, ever since I was a kid, I knew nothing else than uh, soccer, you know, yeah, so. So from your earliest memory, you were already playing? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then did your brothers and sisters, did they play football as well or? No, just uh, my cousin brother, mm -hmm. my cousin, yeah, he plays too. Okay. Yeah, but he hasn't uh, got to the club yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, still playing uh, in the local team back home, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you were growing up, uh. Did, when did you join like your first club team? Like how old were you? Yeah, I think uh, I was uh, 16. Yeah. Uh -huh. I started from uh, Lobby Stars feeder team. Uh, I played with the feeder team for one year. And uh, they say, yo, I think this guy can uh, make an impact in the first team. So I got promoted. So so at 16, you're already training with the first team of the, the Yeah, Lobo? I was uh, training with the, with the second team mm -hmm. and the first team. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. at 16 that's good yeah that's, that's the one thing i always say like in america it's so different yeah because like here um i didn't train with my first professional team until i was 22 whoa yeah that's not uh, that's not good <laughs> <laughs> no but it was all because like it 
there's the, I mean, now it's changing a lot. Like we have yeah. like Fisher and we have yeah. like all the young guys, Jesus and yeah. Martin, but like before it was very, it wasn't like, I mean, you just kind of stuck with your age group, yeah. went off to college and then you mm-hmm. hope to get drafted to MLS. So it's, it's just crazy how it's different everywhere else in yeah. the world. Yeah. So from the minute you were like walking and playing with the ball up until 16, um, it was, was it just all pickup games? Like where were you playing? Yeah. Um, I was playing in a local academy called uh, Abaya Babes. The, he's late though. Uh, where I'm from, like the Boko, he most of the players playing uh, uh, abroad and, and from that are from Boko, you know, all came out from the academy I came out from. Mm-hmm. The man was good, you know, he was financing everything without the government helping or no one helping him. You know, like I owe him a lot, a whole lot for like setting that platform for all the Boko boys, you know. Mm-hmm. It wasn't easy for financing uh, a club all on, all on your own and stuff, you know. Yeah. What was his name? Abaya. Abaya? Yeah. So he kind of like helped Yeah. Helped yeah. you start off and get Yeah, get, ki- get cleats for us, kitas, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's that's pretty. I mm-hmm. mean, it's always funny. Everybody's got like one or a few people that do yeah. that, like help you get started in the club, whether it's your parents or whether it's somebody else yeah. or helps you get connected to the, the first like mm. real connection and stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So Abaya, he he helps you out, huh? A lot, a lot. I owe him a lot. That's that's really yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Where is he still in Nigeria? Just doing the same thing? Keep keeping. No, he's kids? late though. Oh, yeah, really? He's late, yeah. That's too bad. Mm. Yeah. Um. And then so, growing up as well, like how often did you play? Like, once I'm back from school, uh, mm. like we call it the primary school back in Nigeria. Once yeah. I'm back from primary school, I go for practice like every other day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just yeah, okay. And then, um, were you doing any like individual training or was all with no, the team? No, 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 no. No, you just you're just playing, huh? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's good. Then I I wasn't playing for for the money, you know. It was just like a fun thing, what yeah. you love doing, like yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you play any other sports? No, I love her. I love her. volleyball and I can play table tennis very well. Table tennis, yeah, huh? very well. Yeah, uh, we might have to uh, play some bet and play. I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty good at table tennis. I'm a, I'll whip you. Uh, you think? Yeah, I know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> How, have you actually like trained table tennis, or is it just for fun? I think I represented uh, when I was uh, going to secondary school. When I started secondary school, I represented my school mm-hmm. in a table tennis competition. Also. Really? Yeah. Dang. Is, is mm-hmm. table tennis and, and volleyball big in, in Nigeria? Like, what are the biggest sports? Obviously, soccer is first. <laughs> that's right? soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Is that's it, it. That's, that's it. That's the biggest soccer. Everything Wait, else sports. is kind of just for fun? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, so that's the difference between you and me. Because mm-hmm. table tennis is my business like that's my thing yeah so i'm like a pro at table i'm a pro at football pro at table tennis as well wow that's so nice. you got a table tennis at riverside apartments yeah we do okay yeah. then i'll come and I'll, I'll have to come and whoop your ass sometime you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> all right good and then volleyball did you um you guys have a volleyball court too or uh yeah we do but uh it's closed for now i don't think i don't know when they're gonna open it is it because of covid yeah yeah that's too bad. Uh, do you like the on the like sand or on the court? What do you? Is, I love the sand because I'm from Africa. Yeah, we we do sand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I can beat you there too. Yeah. You who would be you and Solo versus me and Kieran? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> you guys have no chance. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. You know, we got two things now. We play some money on it. You already owe me lunch. So no, no, no. You owe me lunch. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Um, and then, so once you once you turned sixteen and you yeah. joined with the the feeder team for the Lobo Stars, mm. how often were they training? Was it every day? Or? Yeah, we train every day, apart from uh, Sundays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, we were playing. Uh, I think in the amateur league. Yeah. Uh, so we we'll play out. We we'll play games on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then were you guys training after school, before school, or what was the? Then I dropped out of school. Oh, you dropped out of school at sixteen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then was that like? Is that like a like a normal thing to do if you want to pursue a pro contract? Or? No, it's not. It's not. Um, my when my dad passed on, uh, I was just left with my mom and uh, my brothers. Mm-hmm. So my mom has to like pay my school fees and my other brothers so I I was like yo at least I know what I want to be in future you know I'm good at what I do so I think you should focus on my other ones and let me pursue my career she was like 
that's smart of you mm -hmm. i'm glad uh you know what you want to be in uh, the nearest future so you have my blessing so that's when i gave in all oh, to that's, soccer, that's yeah. awesome and yeah. how long did you want to be a pro like did, were you nothing else in your mind you just want to be a pro soccer player from the yeah age? everyone must have a like a fallback plan uh i'm thinking of uh becoming a businessman or in the nearest future maybe a year or two mm -hmm. yeah i'm working towards it and uh I hope by the grace of God it will come to pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of like always hard to like it, once you make the decision to drop out of school. Like, yeah. I mean, I dropped out of college and mm -hmm. my parents were like, okay, well, we go for it. You know, we hit the same thing. We, you know, you have our yeah. blessing, everything, yeah. but it's a tough decision. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, when you did that, were you nervous at all about No, like, I wasn't. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, like, I took the decision. I was like, yo, this is what I want, so I'm going for it. Mm -hmm. I don't really care what uh, the next person uh, behind me thinks or says, you know. I, this is what I want, soccer, and I'm going for soccer. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then so, like, with that feeder team that was like the, you said the amateur team, right? Mm -hmm. that you're still training every day, games on Sunday. Yeah. Was everybody else on that team like in the same boat that you were, like dropped out of school as well? or No, no, well, no, no. Some are still going to school. Uh-huh. Yeah, because basically we train in the evenings and mm -hmm. uh, in Nigeria we only go to school from uh, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Dang, okay. Yeah. That's a long, long yeah. day. Yeah, so uh, we train by 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So everyone has a, at least time to like eat something and uh, come for practice, you know. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. How is the, the weather in Boko? Oh, I would say it's nice. It's a... Uh, it's hot, uh -huh. but not hot as uh, Tulsa, though. <laughs> Tulsa. Tulsa, Tulsa is extremely hot. Tulsa trust summers me. Are, are rough. Yeah. What about in the winter? Is it, is it, does it ever it, like get like snow? I've never been over to No, Africa. no, no. It you said, you it, said in the, one of these off seasons, like, you come over to Nigeria, you'd show me around, right? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Your accommodation is taken care of. Oh, you thanks. don't need to worry. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, it, but does it get cold? Yeah, it gets cold uh, during the December period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How cold? Not that cold, but cold. Like, okay. Yeah. Where you need, you need to dress up. Like, put yeah, on some yeah, layers. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And then, so you train, and is it year round? You guys play like all year round and train all year round with that team? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, how was that transition when you were like training with the feeder team? or the second team and then how was that transition you're now starting to train with the, the first team of the, the Lobo Stars right? Is that yeah Lobo Stars yeah. Lobo Stars yeah training with the first team uh, the first week I was a bit nervous and stuff you know until mm -hmm. um, what was it called his late uh, late John George he came up to me and like yo you are good you don't have to be nervous you know show, show, show them what you got mm -hmm. you know he started encouraging me like every practice will call me to his room Next time you should do this, you should move this way, do this, and you know. Mm -hmm. I started feeling uh, welcome in the first time and stuff, you know. And uh, before I know it, boom, they started playing me in, in games with mm -hmm. the first team, you know. So, How old uh, were you when you had your first start or first game, first appearance? Uh, I, w I think I was 18, 18, uh -huh. 19, yeah. And this is in the Ni Nigerian Professional League, right? Yeah. The first division, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, how is the how is the professional league over there? It's tough. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Very physical. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I expect. Very Super physical. physical. Yeah. yeah. Like very. Uh, is it very like? How's it compared to the USL? What do you think? Like in just the style of play. Yeah. Like every everything has a like an identity, you know. Mm -hmm. So. The styles are not same, you know. Everything yeah. has its own style. But uh, when I first came to Lobby, like uh, the coach I was playing uh, under, he was like, uh, "I don't really care. Like every ball must go to Rafa." Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if the if the if the goalie has a ball, he like give it to Rafa. Let him lose it. No okay. problem. Like he had a lot of confidence in me. Like I play a full game. I would say maybe I'll lose a ball like two, three times, five times. Mm -hmm. That's just it. That's, and that's good. I mean, yeah, that, especially as a young kid when you yeah, have that. Yeah, yeah. Like I was very comfortable with the ball. Why? Because even if I lose a ball, come on, I know you can do it. You mm -hmm. have it. You know, stuff like that. So it, it, was, it was Don't, pretty good. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty good. That's, that's, that's really yeah. good. And then um, 
how were your teammates? Like, were they all like, what's the average age on on, on that team? Was it young? Like, I you think were, I, I think I was the youngest player on the team. Uh huh. Yeah, as of when I came in, I was the youngest. Player That's a on the big team. role then. Yeah, 16, 17 years old to be the guy. Yeah, who I was. I old. was the youngest player on the team. Wow. Yeah. And what was the oldest? Like thirty. Yeah, the oldest was. Uh, that was uh, David. David Tiapkase. He's uh, around uh, 32, 33, there mm-hmm. about, yeah. Dang. Mm-hmm. And then, so you were there for two years, right? Yeah. Two seasons? I, I was there for two seasons and I left for Plateau United. Uh-huh. I stayed in Plateau United for six months. Mm-hmm. Then I got a contract in Norway. Uh-huh. Yeah. And why did you leave Lobby Stars to go to Plateau? Yeah, because uh, Plateau United were playing in the Champ- Calf Champions League. Mm-hmm. So I needed to like boost my profile and stuff. So I... So is it just a slightly better team, slightly better... Yeah. More was, exposure? Yeah, more exposure and uh, the pay was better than what I was earning. Oh, in so you went for the stars. money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went for the money and the profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no. yeah. Um, looking back at it, do you think that was the right move or...? Yeah, perfect. It was a perfect mm-hmm. move, yeah. What, what, how did your coaches react when you told them like, hey, I'm going to leave? Oh, it was, a, it was a sad news. Uh-huh. Very sad news. Like... I remember the chairman of the club then. Uh, he, we became like enemies, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he was like, I picked you from the streets. I made you who you are. And now you want to leave? I said, sir, if if you were in my shoes, you take the, the decision, you make the, this decision I'm making right now. Mm-hmm. Plateau United is playing in the CAF Champions League. Why you are playing only in the league? Mm-hmm. So I need to like go to Plateau United so the outside world can get to see me and more, you know. Yeah. So at God we have it. I went to Plateau United after uh, my second CAF Champions League game. They team me no way. Started picking interest and boom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I was I was actually talking about this in like a, one of my YouTube videos about how like loyalty to your club yeah. is good, mm. but at the same time, the most important thing that you have to be loyal to is your own career. Yeah, it's it's that's the most important thing. And if you think you can go someplace else where it's a little bit better, a little bit better exposure, mm-hmm. better money for whatever, yeah. you have to make that decision for yourself. And exactly. it sucks, yeah. but it's a business, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's good. I'm glad it worked out, even though it's mm. like. It's a difficult decision and everything. Yeah, it is. And then during this time as well, you had like a, a cap for Nigeria, right? Yeah. So uh, how was that? You got When did you get called in for the national team camp and how that Yeah, go? that was when I was uh, with Lobby Stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was with Lobby Stars, yeah. Uh, like week in, week out, I was always on the team of the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was really hot then, you know. Like like I said earlier, playing on a coach who believes in you, he can do whatever with the ball, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was like a dream come true. Like I wept when I saw my name on the on the call up list. I was like, yo, this is uh, what my late dad always wanted, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I I want to see my son on the screen carrying my name on the back, you know. And lo and behold, it wasn't there, you know, to like see what it really wished for me to like come to pass. You know, I mm. wept all night, like, yeah. 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 That's, that's, I got goosebumps from that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm uh, sure he's, he mm, saw that. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Mm. Um, and then when you had your, who'd you play for when you came in for Nigeria? Yeah. We played against Benin Republic. Okay. Yeah. How did that game go? Yeah. We won, uh, we won 2 1. Two one. Yeah. How'd you play? I played great. I came in in the second half and yeah, uh, yeah, just solid, just mm. solid performance. I think I was playing as a single pivot in the game also when mm. I came in, like, and so it's great. It was great. That's all. And how old were you? Like, eighteen, nineteen? No, uh, how old was I? Nineteen. Nineteen. I think nineteen. Yeah. Were you? Uh, were you ever on the same the with like Solo? Did you know Solo at all? Did you play against him? Or yeah, me and Solo were from the same town. So mm-hmm. growing up, I knew who who he is and stuff. You know, so mm-hmm. and uh, we live close. Like how far? Like just a stone throw. Really? Yeah, in Boko, just a stone throw. That's that's a small world. Huh? Yeah, be right yeah. over there now, over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about uh Mfan or Stanley? Yeah, I'm from lives in a, in a different state. It's mm-hmm. called uh, Akwaibo. Uh-huh. That's like uh, from the far south. Okay. Is it south? Yeah, far south. And uh, Stanley is also from Boko, but okay. uh, he's from uh, the south. So. But he's, he was born and raised in Boko. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. 
And did you guys like? What about? Did you ever play against Stanley or play against Mufon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played against Mufon a lot in the in the league. Uh huh. Yeah, but as for Stanley, we play uh, the off season practice. I would normally do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we play against each other. You know, the pros and uh, the homeboys. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's cool. That's mm-hmm. really cool. And then, uh, so you got your exposure with Plateau. Yeah. And you were playing there. Did uh did well. Yeah. And then you said you only for six months, and yeah. then you did you talk to the club, and then you left for Norway, right? Yeah. And did the, what did the club say when she wanted to leave? Yeah, they gave them a lot of money, so it was like a match watering uh, offer. Mm-hmm. They couldn't say no, you know. Uh, the chairman was uh, like, "Oh, Rafa, why can't you wait till the end of the season?" I was like, "Sir, like I'm going to Europe. Mm-hmm. I'm playing. I'm going to play in the first division in Europe and." Uh, I know you you always want the best for me and stuff, you know. So this is the right time for me to like make this move. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, you are like a son to me. I always want the best for you. So you have my blessing, you can go. Mm-hmm. But anytime you feel like coming back home to play, Plateau is a home for you. Awesome. So you left some really good terms. Yeah, yeah. Like if I'm back in Nigeria and I decide to visit Plateau today, the fans they welcome me like a king. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. when I was there, I was their top scorer. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. sick. What what was the what were the fans like for uh, Plateau and for Lobby Stars? Like, how many did you get on average? Ooh, Plateau, the turn up of the fans was massive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then massive. what about like Lobby? more than Lobby Stars? Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. What was like the biggest game that you played? Like the m- most fans that you played in front of? Yeah, that was against uh, Plateau United against Kano Pillars. Mm-hmm. It's like a debut game, you know. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a huge game for both sides. So. Thousands of guys, thousands of fans. Yeah, yeah. Like Pillars has uh, the most fans in Nigeria. Uh huh. Kano Pillars, yeah. So we are playing in their home in Kano. So they thought oh, it was massive. <laughs> the atmosphere, everything, you know. Yeah, that's, that's it was awesome. Yeah. What was your What was your best memory? Like, your, did you have one game that stood out, or like one time or moment that you like? This is. I like not made it, but like it was like a big moment for you in Nigeria. Yeah, no, I would say it's uh, our game, uh, our game against uh, Tua de Sahara mm-hmm. in uh, in Tunisia. Okay. Yeah. Tunisia. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, I was nursing uh, an ankle injury, uh-huh. and the coach was like, "Even if you have one leg, you are going to play." <laughs> I said, "Okay." Uh, I got into the game, and uh, I did awesomely well. I, though mm. we lost the game. Uh, Four two mm-hmm. away, uh, and I scored one of the goals. I took a, I played a, a penalty, a mm-hmm. penake. Yeah, yeah. Like the fans were, yeah, we were shouting, screaming, and when I took the penalty, everywhere became quiet. Uh-huh. I was like, yo, I've really done something there, yeah, no? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dang, that's yeah. I had a, I had a good game, and uh-huh. uh, immediately after the game, uh, their chief scout came up to me and was like. Who wanted to play for it to others? Uh, I was like, no, I already have an offer in, uh, in Norway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just waiting for my visa to like come out before I move. Yeah. And how was that once? Uh, how did how did Norway? How did that opportunity come about? Because Norway and Nigeria, it's not close. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was uh, being followed by this agent Ata Aneke. Mm-hmm. Like he was following me in, uh, right from Nigeria, watching all my games and stuff. So. He recommended me to the club, even without meeting him one on one. Like, yeah. So, mm-hmm. the club now have to fly from uh, Norway to watch me in Tunisia. Wow. And when they watched me, they they were like, "Yo, this is what we want." Mm-hmm. The coach was there himself, and this is what you want. And boom, it, that was it. They made it happen. And then, uh, I mean, that's always the goal, huh? Like, yeah. it's always to go over to Europe, try to get a contract in Europe, especially exactly. first division. Yeah. So, how did that feel once it was? Did that feel like one of the best moments of your life when you got that contract in Norway? Yeah, it was a dream come true. Mm-hmm. Like uh, a little boy from the streets of Boko, no connections, no mm-hmm. nobody, a son of a nobody mm-hmm. to be there at that time, you know, it was yeah. it was a huge movement for me. Yeah. yeah. And what year was this? Like, what year did you go over to Norway? I think it was, uh, that was in 2000 and... Uh, 218 216 218 somewhere there no like i i don't i don't like i don't i'm, I'm bad at keeping tabs on the uh-huh. records like that yeah, yeah. okay mm. how old were you do you know how old you were when it happened i think i was uh 
20, 19 going to 20. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay. 19 going to 20. Uh, Still young. Yeah. Young. Uh, uh, and then um, when did you leave for Norway? Like what time of the year was it? Were you, were, do you even, did you have a, like a, you need like a full snow jacket, everything? Did you even have that? Yeah, I do. Because uh-huh. uh, my agent told me, yo, it's really cold in Norway. Mm-hmm. But when I got there, it was summer period. Though. Okay. So yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't cold. It was okay until at about October, November, <laughs> it started getting chilly and stuff. So mm-hmm. I had to like get my big jacket. You know? Yeah. When I was coming back to Nigeria, I have to pay for extra luggage because... <laughs> the jacket one covered jacket's a lot of space. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. you're always traveling to, to yeah. those cold countries. Yeah. What what city was it in Norway? Lillestrøm. Lillestrøm. Yeah, about a ten minutes train uh-huh. to to the capital city Oslo. Okay. Yeah. How was uh, Oslo and Lillestrøm, and how was your experience there? Was it? Did you like it there? Like in the, yeah. the, the actual cities in the in Norway as a country? Yeah, yeah, I love it. Mm. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Did you like the snow? No. no. <laughs> so in the summers, you, you loved it. I love summer. What, what about parents. the summers when it was like the sun never sets or like sets for like three hours at night? How was that? Uh, at first, it was strange though, but I got used to it and I was like, yeah, this is where you are now. So anything you say, uh-huh. you have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I started living with it. That's it. Dang. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's going on a flight. Little Nigerian boy just going straight up to Norway. Yeah. Uh, and then so you land, I'm guessing, in Oslo. Yeah, that wasn't my first outing, though. Like, I've been uh, to Braga in Portugal for triads. Yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't my first outing. So. Okay, when, when did you go to Braga? Um, I think that was after my first season with the first team in Lobby Stars. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I then, went straight to Braga. Did, who did, you, did you try with any like te- like big teams or that I would know? or? Yeah, I went on trials to Sporting Braga. Like, uh-huh. and there was this agent I was working with before, Paul. He was the one that took me to Braga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, but no. obviously the the trials didn't work out, so you came back to no. The pay, the pay was too small. Oh yeah, uh, the pay was too small. Yeah, and it was uh, the second Braga B. It wasn't the first team, mm, the second team. Yeah. How did you like Portugal? Oof. I've heard it's, it's it's just like Africa. Yeah, like I the love it. Weather, everything. Yeah, I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard Portugal is an amazing place. It's to amazing. Go. Yeah. It's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. So then, uh, so let's go back to Norway. Then, so you're in Lillestrøm. Yeah. How was it a big city, Lillestrøm, or not really a big city? Uh huh. But yeah. it was close to Oslo. Yeah, so. it was close to Oslo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, so. and uh, when you got there, did you have your, did they set you up with your own apartment? Did you have a roommate or how'd that work? No, I was living alone in a very big apartment. Mm-hmm. But when I first got in, before they got my apartment stuff sorted, I was in a hotel. Mm-hmm. I stayed in a hotel for a week before they got my apartment stuff sorted out. So mm-hmm. I moved in, yeah. Nice apartment set up and everything? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. And then, so you got there in the summer. So did you just like, just start training with the team or did you like stay there all off season as well? No, I started training with the, uh, with the team immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, after the first week, the second week, uh, I was uh, on the team to like play uh, in the derby game, you mm-hmm. know, so yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, how, was the, how was the transition, like the style of play differences? Did you like feel like it like took a learning curve or did you feel like not just hopped right in and, and played well? Yeah, I think, uh, the only difference was, uh, you know, uh, in Africa, in Nigeria, it's more physical. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I got there, I got to understand that, yo, uh, there's a different structure and stuff uh, in our team. Mm-hmm. There's the movement you need to make. There's where you need to go. Like, as a central midfielder, uh, uh, as a DM in Norway, I didn't really have to do much. Mm-hmm. You know, as a DM, like, you know, so... I was like, yo, this is it. You liked it? Yeah, I love it. Did you like that playing there more than playing in Nigeria? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The elite, we'll it was the elite like, Syrian, right? Like good atmosphere, you know, mm-hmm. good pitches, stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And our, our pitch, both our training pitches and uh, the main board, it was a good grass, grass mm-hmm. pitch, you know, so it's yeah, good. Yeah, because First Division Norway, it's called the elite Syrian, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good league, huh? Yeah, it is. Some good players mm. there. Um, a lot of guys that I talk to that have played over in Sweden or Norway or Finland, they say like it's very, 
I don't want to say like slow, but it's like it's really focused on the build up. Yeah. And tactical. Yeah. It's not just like counterattacks. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no. So I bet that fit your style of play, huh? Yeah. Really build it. Just yeah, touching yeah, the like ball. Move and touch the bird, move that set. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you're one of the faster guys on the team, but you also like to play, you know? Yeah, I love to play. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love to play. Yeah. But who yeah. do you think would win in a race, though? You or Stanley? Oh, Stanley is faster. No, come on. You can be a Stanley. No, no. I can't. Uh, no. <laughs> Trust I me. Raced, I raced Stanley today. Yeah. He, I, he is super fast. Stanley's fast. He's yeah, I raced fast. Stanley and yeah. Stanley smoked me. Okay, so your your first game, you said, was the Derby game? Yeah. And who'd I you got, play? Valarenga. Valarenga? Yeah. How'd that game go? Ah, we lost at home 3-1. 3-1. Yeah, home. it was a sad experience. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you play, though? How did, did you fit right in or... Yeah, I came in, I think, uh, five minutes to go because uh, I was just coming in from Africa, stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then, uh, and then, so how many games, like, because this was, how many games left in the season did you have? Yeah, I think it was uh, about 17, 18 games left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you get into a lot of those games or? Yeah, mm -hmm. some. Some, yeah. Yeah, some I would be on the bench for 19 minutes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was the... Uh, the training and everything in the facilities, like just top class. Yeah. yeah. I might say, uh, Lily Strum, you know, they are like a business club. So, uh, they make all, everything you, you're going to say in Real Madrid, mm -hmm. they make, uh, they make sure they have it in, uh, in their own facility. So when they like sell you out, mm -hmm. the club will say come to like look for other players in the same club. So they like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. We had a lot of facilities, a yeah. lot. Yeah. Yeah, and training pitch is just perfect. Oh my god, <laughs> that's oh. like that's the dream. <laughs> perfect training pitches, grass, yeah. water. Like we have our indoor pitch. Uh, mm -hmm. When it was a uh, winter period, we train indoors. Mm -hmm. You know, so they had everything. And then, so um, how how when that season ended, did you go back to Nigeria? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. For yeah, us, it, it was too cold. As in. <laughs> My first time in uh, being out that cold, mm -hmm. you know, and so, yeah, I went back home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were there any other uh, Nigerian players? Yeah. I was there with uh, Ifang, Imaitu, and uh, Moses Ebiye. Okay. Yeah. Where are they now? Uh, Moses Ebiye is still in Norway, mm -hmm. playing for Trump's. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing for... <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to come say hi yeah <laughs> he's playing for Trump so why might you stay with uh, Lily Strom okay okay yeah. so he's still there huh? yeah wow yeah. That's, that's cool and then um, so you went back to <laughs> Gucci don't go don't mess with Rafa anymore he's scared of you mm -hmm. uh, so you uh, you went back to Nigeria you came back the next season right yeah, yeah. and then how was uh, that preseason that next season yeah like when I even before uh even before the season ended, the coach that uh, scouted me, mm -hmm. the club fired him, and uh, we got a new coach. And uh, yeah, when I resumed the next season, things weren't uh, the same way they were before. You know, the mm -hmm. coach came in with uh, a lot of new players. Like, yeah, I told the club, yo, I have uh, set, uh, some play couple of players I'm coming in with, and it happens that all the players he was he was coming in with were all midfielders. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's it, way, it, yeah. It, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the same the first season yeah yeah i talk about that though of like it's not just about um like especially the pro level it's mm -hmm. less like oh he's better than this player he's mm -hmm. better than him and it's more about oh i want this for my style of play mm -hmm. i kind of rate this player a little bit more like my personal preference you know yeah. so it's very uh it does come down to opinions a lot, a lot of the mm -hmm. time and you can always work harder to make more people you know rate you yeah. but it does come down to opinions at the end of the day yeah. you know so it is tough when a new coach comes in and they uh -huh. have a new idea new direction they want to go in yeah. um did you get into any games that that season yeah i uh, did so but, but not a lot yeah yeah I just fought i just kept on training kind of <laughs> yeah like. i kept on training and uh, i was fed up with the whole thing and mm -hmm. i was like yeah I'm too young to like be sitting on the bench for 90 minutes every game you know mm -hmm. so i said I will have to look for a new opportunity. And uh, then I had a club in Turkey that was looking out for me. And uh, before I could uh, go back to Nigeria, get ready and uh, 
had to talk it. Mm-hmm. I went to apply for a visa and uh, it delayed and stops and, and I end up ended up not getting a visa and really? stops. Yeah. Was, so, was it a first division club in Turkey or no no second division. Okay. Yeah. First division would have been sick. Yeah, second division. <laughs> yeah. Second division though is probably Yeah, second I've division. never I haven't heard anything about the second division in Turkey though, but I'm guessing it's yeah it's good. It's quality. It's good, yeah, it's good. Uh-huh. Yeah. Have you did you ever end up going to Turkey ever? No. Uh-huh. no. Uh-huh. That's that's what's so annoying too with the visas. Mm-hmm. Like being a pro, you think like, oh yeah, if this club wants me or this mm. club wants, I'll just go and sign. Yeah. With a visa process, yeah, the, yeah. it's it's a nightmare. Especially from coming from Africa, like yeah. applying for a visa in the Western world, it's tough. Yeah, it's super tough. Yeah, because even for me, like it, going to Turkey would be a lot easier than coming from Nigeria. Yeah, and just yeah. applying for the visa, which mm. is crazy. It's like, it's just crazy how much harder it is for yeah. a lot of stuff. Mm. Um, was it? How was the visa process in Norway? Was it pretty straightforward getting there? Yeah, like uh, uh, even before I went to the embassy, you know, that I've been uh, making a lot of transfer of players from Nigeria to Norway. So uh, I think the ambassador to to Nigeria, to Norway, mm-hmm. they called the man. And uh, before I could get there, he was like, are you Rafa? I said, yeah. Okay, well, I've been expecting you. Lily Strom called us and stuff, you know. So uh, the whole stuff, uh, it, it took only one week. I got my visa and I traveled. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. Mm. Even from in Germany, I it took me like forever. <laughs> and I, a, a week. I got my visa. That's good. That's yeah. really good. I heard. I've heard that Norway, Sweden, Finland are um, pretty efficient with their visa process. And if mm. the club wants you there, they'll make yeah. it work yeah. for you. So that's good that it happened as well for you. Um, so end of what season is was your last season at Lillestrøm? That twenty nineteen. Yeah, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Okay, so you finished up that season and you're just like, you, you both... No, no, I didn't finish the season. Oh, you left early? Mid-season, I left. Really? So that yeah. was like when? Like June, July? Yeah, it was in June. I left in June. Okay, you just yeah. go back to Nigeria? Yeah. And did you play with any team in Nigeria? Yeah, or? I went back to Lobby Stars. Lobby Stars. Uh, stay, Not Plateau? No, no, no. I wanted, to stay, I wanted to stay close to my family before I travel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I got back home and uh, I signed for Lobby Stars, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So did you sign a one-year contract? Or? No, no, I was on loan. On loan? Yeah. Okay. I, My gotcha. agency said, no, I'm not signing any contract. I need to be on loan. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That's good then. Yeah. And then um, how was it being back home? Was it, did you, were you, was it a good feeling because you're back with your family? Or were you kind of upset that you had to come back from Norway? It wasn't a good feeling. It wasn't the best of feelings at all. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I had to readjust mm-hmm. to the pattern of play and everything, you know, so... Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it wasn't the best feeling. And, you know, uh, where I'm from, if if you are there and you come back to this level, it's really tough, you know, mentally, you know. Mm-hmm. The kind of, kind of stuff we'll be hearing and stuff like that, even if you don't want to care, at the, at the point we're like, yo, this is too much, you mm-hmm. know, like, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And uh, did you have an idea that, like, your next step after Lopi Stars, after that season was going to end? Yeah, even before I got back, uh, I think after two games, uh-huh. we, after two games with Lobby Stars, uh, I started talking to uh, FC Tulsa. Uh huh. Yeah. And how did that connection come up? Did Mike was he he was he yeah, in Nigeria? Yeah, the, the, the present chairman of Lobby Stars now, Tama. Uh huh. It, it made it possible. It made it happen. Okay. Yeah. So he kind of connected you with Mike and yeah, the guys yeah. at Tulsa. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what were your thoughts on coming over to America? Whoa, I don't know, but <laughs> I said, okay, I haven't been to America before. Let's see how it goes, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's definitely not going like to Europe, like first division in Europe. Yeah, yeah. But uh, mm. yeah, it's, especially in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that's a big change as well. You've been, yeah. you've been over snow country of Norway, <laughs> yeah. Nigeria, and now middle of America, mm-hmm. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, so you finished out with Lobby Stars, and then when did the in in Nigeria? How do, how does the season run? Is it like here in America, or is it like the European? Yeah, it's like the European. Okay. Yeah. So then, did you leave mid season? Oh, like it o- was Christmas. I think it was after this. No, no, the season was still on. That was in mid season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mid season, then you you talked to the Lobby Stars, and yeah, and then you came over. Yeah. And uh, how was your trip out here to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma? Oh, it was it was tough, yeah. really tough. Twenty nine hours. <laughs> Where then, was your layovers? Yeah, uh, the first time uh, it was uh, from Abuja to 
Abuja to UK, uh-huh. Heat, uh, Heathrow. Yeah. Uh, from UK to to America. Yeah. That's it. Uh, and you, it was no way was it Heathrow straight into Tulsa. You probably had to go somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I dropped at Dallas. Uh huh. From Dallas to Tulsa. Oh God, when that. I got to Dallas, I missed my flight. I have to sleep in Dallas. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Mm. See, see Gucci. She's, no, no, no. You want You want her? Nah, nah, life? nah. I can put her there. No, <laughs> I'm even scared if she would jump on me. No, nah, she's good, bro. She's mm. nice. Uh, okay, and then um, how was? Did you have any like? I know. Was, I wanted to ask this too with Norway. Mm. Um, did you have any like big culture shocks like going from Nigeria to Norway? Anything that stands out to you that you're like, wow, this is really different, good or bad, and also here in America. No, no, I think uh, it was pretty straight. Everything was straight and cool, but no way. It's, it was also far, so, you know, not, mm-hmm. uh, not Europe, it's far. What about uh, um, the language, Norwegian? You said you can understand a little bit of a it. Little, a little of it, uh-huh. yeah. Uh, little and Lilith Strom, did a lot of people speak English? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. That's what I've heard, like, everybody yeah. in, the, in Norway. Almost, almost, almost are speak uh-huh. English, yeah. Can, do you want to say any Norwegian right now? Can you remember any? Yeah. Say something. Uh, uh, FIFA, FIFA. like that, that is a common language. Like, well, what the earth? Uh-huh. Uh, FIFA, like that was the first thing I had in Norway. It's, FIFA. Always, it's yeah. always the bad words, <laughs> it's always the bad words. Yeah, that's funny. Mm. Um, and then so coming into to Tulsa, uh, that was 2020 season, yeah. So, talk about how like your preseason went, how it was here being here, and then also with the pandemic and, and being stuck in Tulsa during the pandemic away from your family and not being able to play games how that went oh that was tough mm-hmm. it was really tough like uh i almost lost it i lost it at a point like i called my family and say yo is there any way i can leave this place already like yeah. you wake up you don't see nobody outside just you your roommate and uh, you keep seeing stuff on your phone uh in this state we have uh, 5,000 cases in Tulsa. I was, oh, my God. Mm. That killed me. And uh, without you being tested, like, it was really tough mentally, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, I was, I mean, it was so hard even for me, like, it, to, to just go through that. But I also had, like, Mimi was here. And, like, yeah. I was, I'm in my own country. But yeah. to be, I couldn't even imagine being in a foreign country, mm. away from your family and a lot of your friends, and then to also be stuck in your apartment not doing anything for stuff. how long were we were we not training for it was like march april may and we started to come back in june, in june. Right? so it was like three and a half months yeah it's a long time a lot a long yeah. time very long time yeah but then how was uh now looking at the style of play here and playing in the usl mm. like what are some similarities some differences between the usl the elite syrian and then also in the nigerian premier league or the <sighs> professional league? I would say... Uh, it's called the Nigerian Football yeah, Professional Yeah, Nigerian league. Professional Football League. Oh, Professional Football League. Yeah. Okay, the NPFL? Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, in Norway, it's it's more of uh, the tactics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Easy. Mm. Easy. Like move the, the ball, like slow the build ball up. Slowly. Yeah, the build up, it's very important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, here in America... It's physical though, but I think uh, it's more like PC running. It's more of the running than mm. the ball and stuff, you know. And uh, in Nigeria, it's a physical game, all true. Tackles. So. Yeah, a lot. Because you're a hard tackler. Yeah. You get stuck in sometimes. Mm. You you hit me today in the back. I know. <laughs> I, I did it on purpose. <laughs> I thought I was like, oh. Yeah, because every other player, I would just let go because yeah, uh, yeah. we have a game on Friday, so I mm-hmm. don't want I want everyone uh, like fit. But I know you are strong too, so I needed to like I yeah. wanted you to feel me. <laughs> the ball came in. The ball came more long pass to me, and I'm yeah. like, okay, yeah, I checked my shoulder. I know you're right there. Mm. I passed the ball off, and I was like, boom. <laughs> yeah, because you can see every other person. I was being passive with every other mm-hmm. person, but you, oh, I will always go. <laughs> well, I felt it. I felt it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's funny yeah. um, but I can see that that's, that's pretty much exactly what everybody says though about the different mm-hmm. leagues like yeah. a, a lot like that mm-hmm. um, what's your it was Elite Syrian your, your favorite style of play that you felt like fit you the best yeah I think so mm-hmm. I think so yeah 
Um, I think so. And I'm not, I mean, obviously you, you do well here and, and with Tulsa and everything, but I feel like, yeah, the slow build up tactical, mm. using your brain to play, mm. that's, that's definitely your style of play. Yeah. Um, and then uh, once we started back in, in 2020, we started playing again. Mm. How was it mentally? It was a little bit better, a little bit now yeah, that you're playing like, games? I I started getting my sanity back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I was losing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do during the pandemic? Did, was there anything that helped you at all? Did you play video games? Did you go and just... I don't... Funny enough, I don't play video games. Mm-hmm. I think uh, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah, it takes... Uh, the time I'm supposed to be resting. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be up like playing video games and stuff, so... No. Yeah. So did you watch movies then? Yeah. A I watch movies. movies. Just... I li- listen to a lot of music and create my own phone, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, Good. Mm-hmm. And uh, did you just FaceTime your family a lot? And, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I think that helped. Yeah. I was always calling people, talking yeah. to people. Uh, like I'll be on the phone from morning till night. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We, I drove you over here. You were trying to, you were talking to your daughter. Yeah. When did yeah. you have your daughter? Where, where were you when you had your In daughter? Plateau United. Plateau. When I went to play for Plateau. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's two years old, you said. She's two. Yeah. yeah. How's she doing? She's great. Yeah. She, Beautiful. <laughs> she's back in Boko right now? No, no. She's with her mom in Jaws. Okay. Yeah. How's, uh, is it tough always having to come over here and be away from her? Because, I mean, you, if she was born in Plateau, you pretty much left and you've been away mm. and only get, us, get, get to see her in off seasons, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, mm. that's got to be tough. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's nothing really you can do about it, huh? There is nothing I can yeah, do. Sucks. My hands outside right yeah. now. Yeah. Have you ever thought about bringing her over here? Yeah. Or? Every day. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not worth it, like logistically, or. Yeah, I'm taking my time. You know, maybe uh, when she's uh, three, four, if I'm still in America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not? If I'm not. Uh, yeah. Are you still talking um, with her mom? Every day. Uh huh. Every day. Yeah. How's How's she doing? She's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, and then now, and then off season. So mm-hmm. after the twenty twenty season, we had a good year. Yeah. And then did you you re-signed right? You, yeah. Okay, so you re-signed in off season, mm-hmm. and uh, but you went back for back home for off season, huh? Yeah. That was good. To see, you got to see your daughter. Got to see yeah. everybody. Yeah. That's good. that's really good. And then um, were you excited coming back here for twenty twenty one? Of course I was. Of course, yeah. yeah. And uh, how's this year been so far? Yeah, so far so good. Uh, I would say praise be to God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. That brings us to today. Yeah. Now we're back. Now we, now you're over here in my apartment talking yeah. on the Against All Odds podcast and everything. Mm. Probably this is probably one of the highlights of your career too, being invited onto the Against All Odds podcast. Yeah, <laughs> you think so? <laughs> <laughs> Rafa says that I have to buy him one. Yeah, yeah, you have to, bro. Yeah, I have to. Huh? Yeah, I said that he, that he should buy me lunch. No, you buy me lunch. We'll talk about it later. No. We'll discuss it later. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so anyway, I like to end the podcast, and I like to ask um, three questions. Okay. A little, a little, nothing hard. Don't worry. But three right. questions about it. Uh, what has been the absolute highest and absolute lowest points of your career? Uh, I think the highest is... Uh, when I made it uh, to the national team, mm-hmm. I think uh, the lowest is when I canceled my contract in Norway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, what was in the making the cap for Nigeria? Like you said, like it, I had goosebumps when you were talking about it. Like mm. name on the back, representing your country. Yeah. Like that's what everybody dreams of. Mm. That's awesome. That's. I, mean, I think I'll probably get the call up for the U.S. national team this year, so I'm excited for that. Oh my God, yeah. sounds good. Yeah, I'm excited. Congratulations in advance. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, and then, um, like we talked about it a little bit, but getting your contract here, mutually parting ways um, with Lilith Strom to come back and go to Nigeria. Yeah. Did were you thinking about quitting at that time? No, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for me, uh, I I don't stop until I don't stop I don't stop when I'm tired. I stop when it's over. Mm-hmm. And so quitting is never. Yeah, nah, it's not. So is your goal just to play until, until you literally can't anymore? Huh. Yeah. 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 You talked about a little bit about the after your career going into like the business side and doing yeah. some stuff. Yeah. Do you have any like a particular business you want to get into? Farming. Farming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and would you be your goal to be like doing that in Nigeria? Yeah. In Boko? Yeah. Okay. Mm. What would you and farm? I, I'll be I'll be like exporting my products. Yeah. Yeah. So farmer Rafa, huh? Mm-hmm. What, what, Rafa's farm. Rafa's farm. Yeah. What What would be your product? Do you know? <laughs> That's a secret. <laughs> 
my little secret. Yeah. <laughs> That's a secret, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me know. Let me know. No. I'd love to. <laughs> no. Let me know once you get started. On okay. It, okay. Okay. Sure, I will. Yeah. Sure. And then I want to come visit Rafa's farm. And okay. then hopefully I can maybe eat your product. I don't know what it is, but. Yeah. Most definitely. Okay. Well, yeah, you're going to love my products. Trust okay. me. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, and then uh, a lot of people who watch this, this podcast or listen to this podcast mm. want to become professional footballers. That's yeah. their dream. Uh, what advice would you have to all of those people? Yeah, I think uh, there are three days that makes uh, you a great uh, professional player. One is uh, discipline, two, dedication, and uh, uh, the third one is determination. When you have your three dates, you are there. Mm -hmm. what uh, do you, is there one that's most important or they're all the same? They're all the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Discipline, determination, and, and dedication. Dedication. Yeah. I like that. That's good. So, and that, yeah. that, those three helped you go from your path all the way exactly. to the pro yeah. level. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then um, last question for you, Rafa. Okay. If you could go back to any time like mm -hmm. in a time machine and go and talk to a younger version of yourself. Yeah. When would you go back and what would you say to your younger self? Yeah, I would say uh, stop being sensitive. Stop being sensitive. Yeah. And what, what age would you go to? Yeah, I would, I would say um, five. At five? Yeah. You, so as a kid, you were sensitive? Very sensitive. You, Up to this moment, I am very sensitive. Uh -huh. yeah. Like with criticism or from everything, coaches? Everything. everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Have you, do you think you've worked on that and improved that? Yeah, I'm working on it like every other day. Yeah. Yeah. Because whenever I say something mean to you, you, you seem to be okay. Yeah, because, uh, you know, it depends on uh, where the message is coming from, mm -hmm. you know? There are people you have a healthy conversation with, regardless. Mm -hmm. There are people you have a, a healthy conversation with, and if it's a shit conversation. Why? Because of uh, the kind of person who, who, that the conversation is coming from, you mm -hmm. know? Like, we are all adults. We should know who means well for us and who doesn't mean well for us, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's so that's it. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I think that's important to see what is criticism, like constructive criticism to help yeah. you yeah. and they want the best of you or they're mm -hmm. just trying to belittle you. Yeah. There's a big difference. That's that, that a difference. Yeah. yeah. But like it can be disguised, like mm -hmm. people disguise it, you know, either yeah. way. Mm -hmm. No, I like that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty much it. Do you have anything else to say to the, uh, to the people that are listening to the Against All Odds podcast? Yeah. I would just, I would just want to say uh, thank you guys for like taking out time out of your busy schedules to like uh, watch this uh, this uh, broadcast you know I really uh, appreciate you guys and uh, thanks uh, my best friend on the team for mm -hmm. having me you know he's a shit player but <laughs> I still love him <laughs> peace guys hi <Hi>, guys <laughs> we'll end on that <laughs> see you guys in the next podcast peace <laughs> See you on Twitter tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll flick that in. <laughs>